Commissioners Network for European Development Cooperation. Welcome to this important discussion on the role of the European Green Deal in addressing the multiple challenge, challenges currently faced by African countries. My name is Michaela Gavas. I'm the co-director of the Europe Programme at the Centre for Global Development, and I will be moderating the conversation this morning. Uh, before we get started, uh, a very brief word about the Practitioners Network for those who are not familiar with it. Uh, the network is a platform of official European development agencies which promotes an integ integrated approach to European development cooperation, bringing the view from the field and the EU together to explore operational experiences, ideas and methodologies. Uh, the current co-presidents of the network are Germany's GIZ and the Lithuanian Central Project Management Agency. So the exam question today is, how can European development partners facilitate the growth of green economies in Africa? And is the European Green Deal the magic bullet? Now, what we're hoping to get out of this discussion is a sense of the priorities of European and African partners and how to ensure an equitable and fair green transition of African economies and how the European Green Deal specifically can actually support this. So to stimulate our thinking, we have a panel of distinguished African and European partners. We have Ms. Tanya Gunnar from GIZ, Mr. Kern Duns from the European Commission, Mr. Mamadou Diakite from the African Union Development Agency, and last but certainly not least, our very own young leader, David Watson Mwabila. So please do submit any questions you may have for the panelists through Slido. Uh, you can submit your questions via the Q&A tab, which you'll see on your screen. And I would also ask the speakers to please keep their opening interventions as short as possible to allow us enough time to have a good discussion. So let's get started. We have a keynote address from Tanya Gunnar. Uh, Tanya is the chair of the management board of GIZ and has been since 2012. Tanya, over to you, please. Thank you, Michaela, for the scene setter and this kind introduction. Um, dear distinguished fellow panelists, dear Kuhn, Mamadoud, and David, dear international development community, I'm very pleased that you have accepted today's invitation to the panel on how to achieve a Green Deal for Africa, organized by the Practitioners Network for European Development Cooperation. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of the CPMA and GIZ co-presidency. Let me just say it is an honor to be here with all of you today and to represent the Practitioners Network. As many of you will know, December 2019 marked the adoption of the European Green Deal, an ambitious growth strategy with the vision of a climate neutral continent by 2050. Despite the pandemic, the past few months saw the adoption of many new strategies related to the European Green Deal that clearly show external dimensions. In this context, 2020 was not only a year that was supposed to focus on EU-Africa relations, but also on the fight against climate change. Already a year ago, it was important for the Practitioners Network to initiate the discourse on the implementation of the external dimension of the Green Deal within the network, but at the same time also with other stakeholders, especially with African and European stakeholders. We believe that all of us, African and European policymakers, civil society, NGOs, academics, youth activists, the private sector, entrepreneurs and practitioners need to talk to each other listen to each other, but above all, we need to pull together. We, we are aware that global problems like climate change require joint global solutions and that we are stronger together. Not only to jointly overcome the pandemic, but to achieve a more resilient, greener and more sustainable future. In my opinion, it makes our discussion today all the more relevant and timely. As devastating as climate change and the consequences of COVID-19 are globally, every challenge, no matter how difficult, also offers opportunities at the same time. 
opportunities for sustainable solutions that support public health, a green economy and environment protection simultaneously. This again represents a chance for deeper cooperation and closer partnership between the African and European continent. That is exactly what we are talking about today in the context of the Green Deal. How can African and European partners work to get even more closely together to achieve a common goal? What are our roles? What experiences and lessons have we learned so far? And what are areas in particular can be identified for further action? The Practitioners Network is an open platform for exchange, coordination and harmonization between member states and European Development Organization at the European Commission. The network promotes a coherent, inclusive and innovative approach to European development cooperation, all in line with the Team Europe approach. The implementation of the external dimension of the European Green Deal is one of the key priorities we have identified as CPMA GIZ co-presidency for the coming year. This brings me back to today's topic regarding the implementation of the Green Deal in both continents, Africa and Europe. We foresee a threefold role for us as practitioners of international cooperation. First, the only the practitioners network key strength is its diversity. Our network brings together highly knowledgeable members with diverse backgrounds in both technical and financial assistance, extensive sector and geographic expertise and valuable long-standing local networks on the ground. We have a wide range of methods and approaches to better collaborate and enable joint action. For example, by jointly implementing Team Europe initiatives on behalf of our respective governments, our agencies can make use of many different resources for programs and investments that help increase our collective impact on sustainability and resilience in African partner countries and also in Europe. Our experience tells us that priorities should lie in areas where European expertise and financial mechanisms match contextual African strategies and needs. At the same time, we support the technical dialogue between Africa and Europe on Green Deal issues. Multilateral solutions are central to developing effective responses to climate change threats. Secondly, and related to the first point, we can help bring relevant actors together as we are doing today to support the implementation of the Green Deal in a tangible and dynamic way, based on our experience to ensure a comprehensive and common understanding of the Green Deal on both sides, synergies with existing African policies should be identified. The Practitioners Network stands ready to support the implementation of an African Green Deal based on the Team Europe approach in cooperation with the European Union, its member states, implementing and financing agencies in this regard. We believe that addressing this issue holistically is in line with the just transition mechanism linked in the Green Deal to ensure that the transition to carbon neutral economies is done in a fair way and leaves no one behind. Last but definitely not least, practitioner network members can help ensure African ownership by working closely with various African stakeholders while sharing insights from Europe. Collectively, the agencies in our network work with a wide variety of African partners on the ground, both public and private. This allows us to learn from each other and better understand the wide variety of needs and perspective for sustainable and green development in Africa. Furthermore, as a network of different ideas and approaches to international cooperation, the Practitioners Network contributes to innovation in development activities in a very inclusive manner which also contributes the long-term effectiveness of sustainable and green development initiatives in Africa. Now, before I 
And back to you, Michaela, I want to take the opportunity to thank the European Commission for creating this forum at the EDDs, which again this year's the year, year allows us to exchange ideas in the context of the overarching theme of the Green Deal for Sustainable Future. Organizing such a large event online has certainly been a challenge, but I've been impressed so far and as, a, as great as it would have been to see you all in person, a digital format gives us the great advantage of involving a wide range of participants around the world and that is crucial when we are discussing matters that, that affect us all, as in the case of climate change. Without further ado, I will hand to the, the floor back to you, Michaela. I'm very much looking forward to the different perspectives, a fruitful discussion and to the input of the audience, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Tanya, for that introduction. So let's go straight to uh, Mr. Kuhn Duns. Kuhn is the Director General of DG International Cooperation and Development at the European Commission. Kuhn, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, Michaela. And uh, I mean, Mamadou, David, uh, Tanya, of course, really a pleasure to be here with you. By the way, Michaela, I noticed you corrected the spelling of my name in the, in, compared to the introduction. This time it's right. It's indeed Kuhn Duns. You asked us to be brief, and I will be brief, because I think what I'm most interested in is indeed the, the interaction with the audience, with the different uh, participants. So I'll just make uh, three brief introductory comments on, uh, on what is a vast uh, topic. I mean, the first one is uh, Green Deal in Africa. It's really a must. I think it's, uh, it's, um, it's the typical case where we can make that triangle between planet, people and prosperity really work. I think action, Green Deal type of action uh, with African partners is essential if we want to save the planet. Uh, none of us can do it alone and it will require a full mobilization across the globe and Africa has a crucial role to play uh, in that. Um, it's essential for the people because ultimately the disasters, the impact of climate change is first of all affecting the lives of millions and millions of people and therefore we need to develop action that improves uh, that impact both through mitigation and adaptation. But thirdly, and that's maybe the point I want to stress, it's also essential for prosperity. And I think that more and more the economic case for a Green Deal is very, very clear. The economic case, in my view, is double. First of all, there's a negative case. It's now very, very clear that the impact, the negative impact of climate change on the more vulnerable countries is much bigger when it comes to how it hits uh, the, the economy. A number of African countries, Sudan, Niger, Burkina Faso, they have lost 20% of the GDP per capita just because of the impact of climate change on them. So the negative economic price to pay for these countries and what it means for the governments, what it means for the people is very clear and therefore tackling it is absolutely an imperative. But there's also a very positive case that uh, can be made. If you look at pre-pandemic, I mean, global growth before uh, the, the pandemic was around 23%. Uh, percent. But if you look at the energy-related carbon emissions growth, it was only 3%. So what you see is how a decoupling between economic growth and fossil fuels is already um, happening. I mean, the economic growth is no longer made um, in the depth of a coal mine or in an oil uh, barrel. And that's very good news because Africa is, I mean, amongst all continents of the globe, has a huge potential when it comes to sun, when it comes to wind energy, when it comes to geothermal energy. And just as Africa has managed to leapfrog, I mean, no landlines for telecommunication, but straight into a mobile phone with all the advantages that exist, I, I think it would be absolutely fabulous if we could team up with African partners to also leapfrog into that kind of low carbon, um, low carbon driven um, econo economy. Um, now that's and that's my final point. Of course, brings us to a number of requirements, and that's what I would really like to to discuss. The first one is, of course, technology transfer, and I think that cooperation 
um, on how we can work together on transfer of technology to make that happen is the first one. The second one, of course, is the right, let's say, policy frameworks, regulatory frameworks. Tanya has referred to it uh, already. We see that a lot is, is happening already. But if you look at the national determined contributions at the long term strategies and how we can link national development strategies and those uh, climate uh, strategies, make them merge so that a climate strategy becomes a growth strategy, just as in Europe, the Green Deal is tagged as our growth strategy is a second big area of work is how do you design country by country region by region the right strategies that allow you to bring growth and low carbon um, fights against climate change together and that brings me to the third big component which is of course funding it's about money and here we have a huge amount of work to do um, if I look at uh, global uh, capital, the global asset managers, I mean, half of them basically, the, the 100 biggest asset managers manage around half of global uh, private uh, capital investment. I think we have work to do to see how, which mechanisms are needed so as to channel those big amounts of private sector um, funding that are searching for investments with the return on investment as high as possible but respecting ESG standards how we can make a better link between the huge potential that exists across the African continent and those vast sums of money looking for a return on investment in sustainable investment in uh, the richer parts of the world that's an area which uh, a lot of work has to, be, has to be done still. We, European Commission, the DG for International Partnerships are really keen to team up with our European member states, with the practitioners network, and obviously, most essentially, with our African partners to see how we can contribute to designing that agenda. I'll stop there. Thank you. Back to you, Michaela. Thank you very much, uh, Kuhn, for that. Uh, if I may ask you a follow-up question. Um, I'd like to know how you're going to ensure that the European Green Deal and its associated ambitious green targets don't actually compromise Africa's recovery from the COVID pandemic and that it is inclusive, taking into account the needs specifically of women, girls and young people so that no one is left behind. Pleasure. But I, I think, I mean, we, we always like... Um reasoning in binary terms. There used to be a time when sustainability was pitched against productivity and I think we've now seen how these two perfectly go together. I think something similar is true with the European Green Deal and our partnership um, with, uh, with Africa. The Green Deal in Europe does not build um, Fortress Europe. It's a plan to, I mean, first of all, make sure that Europe can do its contribution to uh, reaching the goals of the Paris Agreement and beyond. But it is also um, a starting point for our partnership with African uh, countries. In everything we do, everything we do, it would be unimaginable if we were not to put young people at the heart of it and women at the heart of it. And I think we will have the opportunity of showing how concretely we do that in practice. I think most of you have heard my, my commissioner probably yesterday. I mean, for her, these two are absolutely central. And so whenever we design our partnerships, whenever we translate those policy discussions into practical investments where we mobilize our official development aid to actually start doing things, the analysis we always do is not just what is the impact on young people and women. It's not just um, a mitigation approach. It's really how can we put young people and women at the heart of it, at the starting point of it. And that's also why we are now starting to set up very structured dialogues at the embassy level in our partner countries with youth organizations, with women organizations, because we want through those discussions to involve them in the thinking, in the design, and in the follow-up of the project, which will concretely translate uh, those, uh, those partnership agreements with, uh, with our African partners. Super. Thank you very much, Kun. 
Uh, now over to Mamadou Diakite. Uh, Mamadou is the acting head of the Environmental Sustainability Division at the African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, uh, based in Joburg, South Africa. Mamadou, the floor is yours. Sorry, Mamadou, we can't hear you. I have to unmute myself. I was thinking the system, the system would do it. Yes, thank you, uh, Michaela. Good morning, good afternoon to, to everyone, to all the participants. And uh, also thank you to the European Commission for this invitation to the EDDs. And I am sitting here today on behalf of um, Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki, the CEO of the um, uh, AUDA uh, NEPAD. And uh, I just would like to, to, to say a few words also to set the scene and to maybe also uh, continue the, the, the very positive uh, framework that uh, Kuhn just uh, um, presented. Uh, a quick presentation to the African Union Development uh, Agency in few words. We are currently uh, present in uh, 52 countries in, in Africa and in various uh, sectors and uh, development uh, work streams, including human capital development through mainly um, vocational training, economic integration, development of uh, infrastructure, industrializ industrialization, and also the environmental sustainability uh, work that uh, I'm currently leading. To, to, to move from the, the, the previous presentation to concrete actions on the ground in Africa that, that really can be seen as a premises or as a, uh, setting the framework for a green deal between EU and Africa, I will uh, uh, focus on two or three um, uh, concrete cooperation that we have with some of the European countries that will also address some of the, the, the questions that uh, uh, Michael, you, you, Michaela, you, you, you just asked uh, a few minutes ago. I want to, to present or uh, uh, talk about the initiative you see behind me, which is called Africa Forest Landscape Restoration Initiative. And uh, in, in Africa, with all the, 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 the mandate from the head, our, uh, our heads of states, our local communities, governments, we want to, 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 to base all the development um, uh, uh, approaches um, uh, tackling climate change, desertification, biodiversity, conservation, and valuation on land restoration. So the, the Africa Forest and Landscape Restoration Initiative was launched in Paris at the margin of um, the COP21, the climate change. The aim is to restore 100 millions of uh, degraded lands and forest water system by 2030. And um, uh, currently, we are we are uh, benefiting from uh, support from the German government through the ICI um, uh, program with uh, DMU. We have also support from DMZ and GIZ uh, on the ground with all the network of um, country uh, representations. Uh, we, we, we are now implementing a 20 million euros a program in four, four countries, Malawi, uh, Kenya, Cameroon, and uh, Rwanda. And also we benefited uh, from a support from Sweden through the SIDA um, headquarters in uh, Africa, in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, where uh, we, 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 are, we are working on a 2.2 million um, uh, dollar support, which is a 22 million kroner, uh, Swedish uh, kroner, to effectively uh, support women and young Africans to, to, to become uh, entrepreneurs, uh, business, uh, restoring land and valuing land and having a um, uh, return on investment. So uh, we have selected 100 uh, of them out of uh, 1,500 applicants. And this kind of action, this is how we see some component of the, great, uh, the, the Green Deal between EU and, uh, and Africa to expand those kind of uh, initiatives. I will stop uh, here, and if there are questions, I will try to address them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mamadou. And I do have a question, if I may. 
Um, so promoting green energy transitions faces a double challenge. Um, there's access to renewables, actually, which needs to be increased. Uh, and then at the same time, challenges from phasing out of fossil fuels, uh, for example, job losses and stranded assets uh, need to be addressed. I mean, how, how do you think the EU can best assist the development of African-led solutions? Uh, in the fight you. against climate change. Thank you. thank you for your question. I think Kun alluded to, to, to it, and we see that in all uh, uh, big multilateral environmental um, uh, agreements, the climate change, desertification, biodiversity, we, there is a framework for technology transfer, and progress has been made in the past 20, 30 years to really accept that that the, one of the basis for a sustainable development is transfer of uh, uh, sustainable technologies also. And also we know that uh, Africa is the, the, the richest continent in terms of renewable energy uh, potential, solar energy, hydropower, wind turbines, biomass, and man, many others. So the, 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 the and in, for instance, in AUDA NEPAD, we value very, very much the, the, the vocational training to really uh, uh, give uh, trainings to our young uh, population, women, that will uh, uh, allow this transition from traditional uh, types of jobs to those that are linked to sustainable uh, development. So these are really potential for cooperation to not only address the, the losses from this uh, COVID pandemic, but also address the climate change, uh, um, climate change uh, challenges, for instance, and uh, to, to, to move towards sustainable, sustainable development and decent um, jobs. Thank you. Thank you very much. So finally, over to David Watson Mwabila. Uh, David is the managing director and co-founder of Fourth Line Zambia. Uh, he's also the lead advocate of the social enterprise project Outgrow It, uh, a rural livelihood improvement program that develops commercially viable and sustainable agribusiness models. Uh, he is also part of the youth, uh, the Young African Leaders Initiative, and the UN SDGs Goalkeepers. David, the floor is yours. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I want to extend my thanks to the EU for the invitation to be part of EDD 2021. And I also want to extend my thanks to the country delegation team for inviting me to use the offices today during my speech. So biodiversity preservation, climate change are the defining issues of our times. As somebody who is living in the front lines of the most affected communities on the planet as a result of climate change, it is an honor to be part of this panel and present the voices of the voiceless. Rural and small-scale farming communities in sub-Saharan Africa are the hardest hit by climate change. And despite them being the people that contributed the least, as somebody who grew up in a rural area, I have seen and experienced how climate change is accelerating poverty and hunger amongst the vulnerable communities. For example, in 2017, 2018, something happened which I never thought would happen in my lifetime. The well that my grandmother had dug as a source of water for the community as well as our livestock at home ran dry. This was as a result mostly of the changes in the, in the rainfall patterns, which were induced by climate change. And after the wells were uh, rain dry, poverty and hunger ravaged on the community like a plague. As somebody who has experienced climate change firsthand, it was against this background that I decided to found Fourth Line, a social enterprise that is working towards building climate resilience among the most poor and vulnerable communities in Zambia and surrounding countries. We do this by enabling them to harness the power of the local resources through sustainable forest management. We also provide them with the 
income generating opportunities, we also train them on how they can sustainably manage their forests in order to earn a living as compared to uh, producing charcoal, which leads to deforestation and accelerates the situation even further. So when we talk about the Green Deal for Africa, the key thing that the Green Deal needs to address is the people that are at the bottom of the pyramid. The solution needs to bring all parties on board. The communities on the ground, their representative governments, and the EU as well. The conversation needs to be two-centered. It needs to have a common dialogue. It needs to address the critical needs. It needs to come from the ground and upscale. As compared to trickling down, the solution needs to upscale. Over to you. Thank you very much, David. Um, and if I may ask you as well, I, what, what do you see are the, the, um, the main challenges for entrepreneurial leaders like yourself uh, while working with European and African development practitioners and institutions? Thank you so much for the great question. The biggest challenge that youths, especially in the Global South, not only in Sub-Saharan Africa, but other uh, countries such as the Caribbean, the biggest challenge that we have is having access to finance. As compared to our friends in the West, it's relatively easy to approach a government office and be able to receive support. On the contrary, in our context, it's quite hard and the bureaucracy that is uh, uh, related for you to be able to acquire the finance is really, really difficult. A practical example that I can give you, we had been working on this project with my team for over a year before we got our first support from the Gates Foundation through Civicas. Despite being able to, to interact with the various government entities, those challenges are still there. And another issue which is really affecting, especially the entrepreneurship ecosystem in the African continent, is the issue Are you able to get me? I think my network. Uh... Yes, David, we can hear you. Go ahead. All right. All right thank you. I was saying that uh, the critical issue that is affecting young entrepreneurs, especially in the African continent, apart from having access to finance, is the technological aspect of implementing the projects, for example, that we are doing. We have to go outside uh, of the continent in order to be able to receive the support that we need to scale. A practical example I can give is our recently project which focuses on the use of data to be able to sustainably manage these communities and the forests that they're protecting. We had to get support from the University of Iowa in the US in order for us to start doing the land mapping and so on and so forth. So if we really are to address the challenges that the people at the bottom of the pyramid are facing in the continent in relation to the Green Deal, we need to be able to, one, ease and enable the access of finance to the youth and women-led organizations. We are also supposed to facilitate a mechanism for technological transfer in order to be able to really impact the communities and the communities that are in need. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, David. That was great. Um, before I open to the floor, can I perhaps put, David, your two challenges uh, back to Kun, um, the challenge of access to finance and the technological aspect. Kun, how, how is the EU going to address these two issues? Well, thanks, and thanks a lot, David. And I'm absolutely not surprised by, by the point, uh, the two points you, you make, because they, they are absolutely crucial. And before responding to it, I would actually want to add a third one, um, which links to, to the other point David made. And I think it's, it is impossible to simply transfer 
European solutions to Africa. I mean, the, the whole context is different. And that's why, I mean, I'm a great fan of, of co-creation. Where, where we bring people from the two continents together. And it's really for our African partners um, locally on the ground to design the solutions because they need to be adapted to the very specific context. And of course, in cooperation, in partnership with Europe, we can bring some of our tools, some of our experiences, but ultimately what will work in Africa will be very much African. It cannot be the European Green Deal for Africa. It's going to have to be the African Green Deal for, for Africa. And if we can design that together, and a lot therefore lies in the process, I think that's, that's fundamental. That applies to technology transfer um, as well. Obviously, there, I mean, there are a lot of things that are available in Europe, that have been uh, developed in Europe but it will need to be adjusted and, and adapted. I mean, just to give you one example, um, we have these European satellites uh, turning, um, I mean, geostationary, um, turning around. They provide a huge amount of data, notably environmentally related uh, data, which we, um, I mean, offer for free to, to our partners. But we see how an investment indeed needs to be done, and David has, has uh, referred to it, to make those data usable and relevant for an African context. Now, when we talk about sustainable agriculture for indeed smallholder farmers, these data contain, I mean, a wealth of information about weather patterns, about when exactly to plant, when exactly to harvest, and so on. And so you can see the potential is obvious. If we can link these data, link them to people on the ground and translate them into something that is of operational value for um, those, those local communities, that's when we're talking. You cannot do that in isolation. You need to do that together with African partners, which then brings me to the whole issue of access to finance, which is indeed a, I mean, a fundamental one, not only in this area, but in many, many others. I mean, for many small entrepreneurs, people with great ideas who, are, who found creative solutions, you go to a bank, you present your project, interest rate 30%. I mean, it's prohibitive. So what we are doing here is we are using um, ODA, grant money, um, to blend it or to provide guarantees to development finance institutions. Those development finance institutions can subsequently provide backing to local banks so that those local banks can shift the burden because a lot of the cost is linked to a perceived risk that they can shift that to the development finance institutions and backed up by our guarantees. And that's one example, there are many other uh, tools that are available, but one example of how through our interventions, we also try to address the key issue of access to uh, finance. Back to you, Michaela. Great, thank you very much, Kun. Um, if I could ask Amadou, uh, Mamadou a question uh, which has come in. Um, so given how vast the African continent is and the numerous and diverse environmental challenges faced by different countries, how is it possible to ensure a multilateral and united response for green transition across the entire continent? Mamadou, I, I think you're on mute again. No, I always think that it's automatic, it will be unmuted, but it's okay, unmuted. Uh, yes, thank you for the, the question. No, what, I, what I can say is that um, the African continent, maybe it's not so visible, this is the one of the part of the uh, communication advocacy work to, to do. Uh, we have started long ago to set the, the, the frameworks for green economy and circular economy in Africa. Uh, in another previous uh, professional life, I was working in an uh, advisory services at the United Nations uh, Environment Program uh, to, to really uh, support African countries and Latin American, uh, um, uh, Latin American countries 
to really uh, build the, the, the reg regulatory frameworks which are and legal framework that are so important for uh, uh, to be able to 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 to, to host and uh, secure investments for, uh, for for instance and uh, many african countries are working towards the, those um, those uh, uh, those objectives to 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 make the, the, the economic uh, environment conducive for investment. And um, you, at more than 20, 30 countries have already those uh, regular, re regulatory and legal framework in, in, in place. And uh, another one is to, 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 to make uh, the more and more can African countries, especially with this, uh, the, the, the African free trade uh, um, agreement, are uh, also uh, putting in place uh, systems, laws, uh, rules, that policies that allows to make business, to open business more, more easily. So in some countries, in a uh, in few hours, you can uh, uh, open your business legally to start uh, operating. So these are the kind of converging um, uh, policies and uh, agreements that uh, we are putting in place to, 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 to attract investment because one of also our our statements or uh, messages that we want to convey convey is that to move little by little from aid sitting and waiting for aid and accepting welcoming investment the, for, uh, for for more sustainable development um, uh, objectives thank you thank you mamad and uh, David, um, a, a question for you that has come in. Um, so what type of partnership or co cooperation would you like to see uh, between Africa and Europe in supporting green initiatives uh, on the continent? Thank you for the wonderful question. The key principle that needs to govern the partnership between the the African Union and the EU needs to be focused on the needs of people. And it needs to move from the donor and receiver relationship to a more coexistence uh, type of a setup where the EU and the AU come to the same table. They discuss the challenges that they are both facing and the potential solutions that they can implement together in order to enable the, trans, the translation from the current economic status into a more greener Africa and the rest of the world. One key principle which I always like to highlight every time I'm talking about climate change, I always love to emphasize the role that technology plays, the role that the social economic uh, uh, dynamics of the people at the bottom of the pyramid plays. So when we talk of the partnership and the relationship between the EU and the AU moving forward post the COVID-19 world, it needs to focus on the needs of people. It needs to shift from the donor receiver type of a relationship into a coexistence relationship where the two parties come on board, they discuss the solutions, and they implement them together. That's the type of partnership I want to see, and that's the type of partnership I want to be part of and contribute. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, David. Um, and just before we move to our final phase uh, of this excellent conversation, uh, a final question, if I may, to Kun. Kun, can you talk us through a little bit um, what you see as the added value of Team Europe uh, especially in the external dimension of the Green Deal, uh, including through um, some of the Team Europe initiatives? Well, with, with, um, with pleasure. I mean, it, these are the days of the European uh, Championships for football, uh, and I always like to use the football team as the metaphor for Team Europe. I mean, in, in Europe, uh, when it comes to um, development cooperation, I mean, we have... Uh, we have shared um, part of what we do at the EU level. That's what my department does, my commissioner, the EU Development Cooperation Party, International Partnerships. But in parallel, 
all our member states also have their own uh, bilateral development uh, policies. And what we used to do was obviously we, we discuss a lot, we see broadly eye to eye, but we implemented things very much in parallel. And there was a real possibility uh, in COVID-19 and the, the need to react as efficiently as as fast as possible to the COVID-19 challenge has actually made that happen is to see how can we play more as a team. So we keep being individual players, but we can play more as, as a team. And that's what Team Europe um, is about. Now applied to, to the Green Deal, whether it's about renewable energy or whether it's about uh, Natura Africa, the, the big idea we have to work on conservation, protection of, uh, of forests and natural uh, habitats. What we're doing is we're bringing the European players, the EU development ministries, the EU agencies and practitioners network, the European development finance institutions together and that group, that team, which is Team Europe, engages then with African partners. It makes us a stronger partner, it makes us a better partner, it makes us a more coherent partner and moreover it makes us a partner that subsequently in these kind of solutions that we co-design, that we co-create with African partners, we can then be much, much stronger as a partner to roll them uh, out. That's the huge potential uh, for Team Europe. We've started it only, I mean, one year and a half ago, two years ago. And if I see where we are now, uh, how much it is delivering um, already in terms of joined up thinking, how it makes us, I'm really convinced, how it makes us a better partner for our African partners, I, I, I can only, I mean, I can only be pleased with, with, uh, with the way in which this is going. Back Thank you, you Kun. Okay, so um, now moving on to our final phase. Um, Mamadou, if I could come to you first uh, with a final statement. Um, and if you could answer the question that I have in mind, which follows on directly from uh, Kun's answer. Are, are you reassured that the EU has the right approach uh, to facilitating a green transition in African economies? Uh, and, and if I may, how can cooperation between European and African partners be improved? Thank you, uh, Michaela. I'm not reassured. I, I never had doubt. This is the this is um, uh, this is what I can say 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 first and. Having this uh, this approach of a green deal will combine the recovery from the the, the pandemic and then still have keeping the path to the sustainable development goal objective to the, the African Union uh, agenda 2063 also uh, uh, vision and uh, objective to to, to complement what was uh, said uh, now I. I usually end my also my statements with one uh, appeal that is just uh, as we are supporting 100 young and uh, young uh, Africans women and youth uh, to 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 become entrepreneurs so we move again away from this assistance or uh, aids only we we are supporting them doing giving them incubation uh, training to become entrepreneurs Let's scale up through the Green Deal, through all the partnerships. Let's scale this to 10 million young Africans and women Africans by 2030 to become, to become self-sufficient by learning and implementing business-oriented uh, uh, activities, knowledge, skills, to, to be self-sufficient at the same time supporting uh, and restoring the land for the, the whole continent and the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mamadou. Um, Kun, what, what are your key takeaways from this discussion? And is there anything that you think should be done differently um, as a result? My, my key take, takeaway is, um, I mean, keep walking. What, what I've heard is that uh, the thinking we have, the thinking that, uh, that Mamadou has set out, that David has set out, I mean, we're really on the right track. 
both in terms of how we approach things um, and what are, let's say, new elements that should be different from what we used to do. Uh, and this kind of adjustment in our, in our, in our relation is, is really, really happening. Now, the key thing is to make it to make it happen and I think from that point of view we're in a we're in a good space I mean we are starting a new budgetary uh, cycle in Europe for the next uh, seven years so this is the point in time when some of those strategic discussions strategic orientations on what are our common priorities on which we should put funding really need to need to happen and I was let's say very much um, reassured indeed by this exchange that we're working in the right uh, in, in the right direction so uh, now that we know that lots of work ahead of us super thank you very much Kuhn uh, David what message would you like European development partners to take away from today's discussion thank you and thank you Kuhn for that wonderful explanation, I think I'll build up from what you've said. Now, the key important thing that we all need to do at the moment is adjustments. We have seen what has worked in the past and what has not worked. The Green Deal that uh, the European Union, the framework that you have done, is a proper step in the right direction. What I would love to see is uh, the bringing on board of uh, young people, for example, like the way EDD has done, you, you've, you've brought uh, 17 young people from all across the world to come and issue our concerns, to come and uh, give our views on how we can collectively work together and move forward. I think that's one area, that's one key message I would love the EU to take, that in each and everything that you are going to do, when it is pertaining to the Green Deal, engage the young people, both at the grassroots level and at the highest level possible. And furthermore, I would love to see an initiative where we would have youths from Africa and youths from the EU meeting and having dialogues on how they can collectively solve the problems that we are facing. That's my, that's my key message. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Um, and a message for young entrepreneurs in Africa, based on your own experiences? Thank you. When I'm giving uh, a message to the young entrepreneurs, I always emphasize that don't wait for things to be all right. Don't wait for the conditions to fit your plans. You have to start where you are. The next people that are going to move the African continent forward are going to be African industrialists. We need to sharpen our entrepreneurship skills. The challenges ahead of us are very stiff and hard, but with persistent passion for our continent and our country, we'll be able to achieve great things. Keep going. That's excellent. Thank you, David. Um, I'm going to hand over to Tanya for uh, a short um, wrap up and uh, her key takeaways from this discussion as well. Tanya. Well, well thank you so much. What a fruitful discussion. Uh, on behalf of the PN co-presidency, I would like to thank all the speakers for their valuable and excellent contribution. Uh, I always feel, and this was the same today, I always feel no ma matter how long a panel lasts, there is never enough time in the end. This is why I want to emphasize that the Practitioners Network is committed to continuing the dialogue and helping with the implementation in many of the areas that European Green Deal addresses in Africa. And thank you so much. I take away planet, people, prosperity. I take away, don't wait, act. Um, I take away, we are on the right way. Um, and everything is fits very well to what we as practitioners um, and practitioners network could um, do together with the African uh, partners. We took uh, to get, today we kicked uh, off the conversation together, listened to the different views and identify ways to continue the conversation and work better together. The next step will be to walk the talk. 
let me assure that uh, the practitioners network will continue the exchange on the green deal and on africa both internally and externally we feel that such discussions are critical because we believe that all stakeholders need to have an agreed and informed understanding of what green deal means for africa and how it should be adapted to the continent only then it can be successfully and if i may add i've get, got the feeling that there are a lot um, um, of um, good ideas there and we can um, uh, count on our partners and we can do that together. Internally, the um, co-presidency CPMA and GIZ, the Green Deal will be prioritized in various formats in the coming year and is expected to create synergies with other important areas of work such as digitalization or the private sector. And David shows that the private sector is very crucial, the private sector coming from young people, the private sector coming from women, it is crucial to uh, involve. Um, externally, by following international conferences involving partner organizations and other networks dedicated to sustainable development in our events, studies, workshops and other exchange formats. Through our websites and social media channels, we keep all interested parties informed about future events and the general work of our network. For more information, please do, please do not hesitate to contact our network. So thank again for to the uh, European Commission for organizing the European Development Days and give us the chance for such exchanges. It was a pleasure for me personally to participate again. And thank to uh, all panelists for your stimulating contributions and to the audience for the challenging questions. And of course, a big thank also to you, Michaela, for uh, an excellent moderation. I know moderation in times of digital, is, uh, of digital events is not really easy. So thank you so much uh, for this excellent moderation to you. On behalf of the PN, I would like to conclude by emphasizing that we are very much looking forward to more discussions and cooperation on the Green Deal with Africa and European stakeholders in the future. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Tanya. Um, and just before I thank everybody and, and close this uh, discussion, uh, I believe we have a gra graphic representation of the discussion uh, today, which um, will be hopefully put up on the screen uh, in a second or two. Ah. Oh, I've just been informed that we don't have it. Uh, so in that case, um, uh, that leaves me to, uh, oh, we have it, sorry, just heard, it's back. So here we go. Should be coming, <laughs> there we go. So this is a graphic representation of our discussion today on how to achieve a Green Deal for Africa. Um, it is somewhat hard to read, but everybody will have access to it uh, after uh, the, uh, the discussion and after the event. Um, so please do take a look uh, as a, a good reminder of some of the important things that were um, said today. So uh, allow me now to thank all of you, all the speakers uh, for, for very inspirational uh, words. Um, uh, you've all been very disciplined as well, I should say, and kept to time. Uh, and uh, and let's, uh, let's walk the talk, as Tanya has uh, said. Um, so thank you to all of you.